Today, we're diving into the world of Flexbox and CSS. Flexbox is a powerful tool that helps us position elements on our page exactly where we want them. And it makes responsive design a breeze. So let's get started. First things first, to use Flexbox, we need a container and some items inside it. Let's say we have a box, which is our Flex container. And inside this box, we have three smaller boxes, which we'll call Flex items. In Flexbox, we deal with two main axes the main axis and the cross axis. By default, the main axis runs horizontally and the cross axis runs vertically. This helps us determine how our items are laid out, side by side horizontally or stacked vertically. First, we are going to start with the flex container properties. Now, let's talk about the display property. Normally, elements on a web page use a display value of block or inline. But to activate Flexbox, we need to switch the display value of our container to Flex. Watch what happens. By setting it to Flex, all the items in our container automatically line up in a row along the main axis. This is the first step in using Flexbox to organize your elements. And that's our setup. With this foundation, we can explore more advanced properties to control spacing, alignment and order of items within our Flex container. Now that our Flex container is set up with Display Flex, let's explore how we can change the direction of our items with the Flex Direction property. This property is super handy for adjusting layouts without having to rearrange any HTML code. The Flex Direction property controls how items are placed in the Flex container, essentially adjusting our main axis. It comes with four values, row, column, row reverse, and column reverse. Let's see each one in action. By default, flex direction is set to row. This means our items line up side by side from left to right along the main axis, just like we saw earlier. Next, let's change it to column. Watch closely. Now, our items stack vertically starting from the top left. This is perfect for creating a columnar layout, especially useful in mobile views. Moving on to row reverse. This flips our row direction. When set to row reverse, our items still line up in a row but start from the top right moving towards the left. This can be useful for certain design requirements like prioritizing the last item. Lastly, we have column reverse. With column reverse, items start from the bottom left and stack upwards. It's another powerful way to control the visual presentation of your content. And there you have it. Next Flexbox property is Flex Wrap. This property helps us manage how items behave when they run out of space in the container. Let's break down the three values it can take. No wrap, wrap and wrap reverse. First up, no wrap. This is the default setting for Flex containers. With no wrap, all Flex items will try to fit on one line, no matter what. They might shrink or overflow the container if there isn't enough room but they won't wrap onto a new line. This is great when you want all your items to stay on a single line, but it can be a problem if the items are too many or too large. Next, let's switch to wrap. When we set flex wrap to wrap, flex items will line up on one line until there's no more room. Then they start a new line from the left, similar to how words wrap to a new line in a paragraph. This setting is incredibly useful for responsive designs because it allows items to adapt to different screen sizes without overflowing. Lastly, we have a wrap reverse. With wrap reverse, the behavior is similar to wrap but with a twist. Instead of starting a new line from the top, items will start from the bottom and wrap upwards. That's how flex wrap works in Flexbox, giving you control over how items wrap inside the container. All right, let's keep the momentum going. Another incredibly useful Flexbox property is Justify Content. This property helps us align our items along the main axis, which, as you remember, can be horizontal or vertical, depending on flex direction. Let's explore the different values it can take. Flex Start, Flex End, Center, Space Between, Space Around, and Space Evenly. By default, Justify Content is set to Flex Start. This means that all flex items are packed towards the start of the main axis. On a row, that's the left side. And on a column, that's the top. Next, let's switch it to flex end. With flex end, all items shift to the end of the main axis. So on a row, they move to the right and on a column to the bottom. 
Switching to center gives us a neat middle alignment. With center, items are perfectly centered along the main axis, providing a balanced look, especially useful in headers or footers. Now, let's look at space between. Space between distributes items so that they have equal spacing between them. The first item is at the start, the last at the end, and the remaining space is split evenly in between. If we use space around each item gets an equal amount of space around it. This means the space on either side of an item is the same, but notice how the space at the beginning and end of the container is half that between the items. Lastly, there's space evenly. Space evenly is similar to space around, but it goes a step further by ensuring the space between any two items is the same, including the space at the edges of the container. And that covers justify content. Next one is Align Items, a flexbox property that controls how items are positioned along the cross axis. Remember, the cross axis is perpendicular to the main axis, which we adjusted with Justify Content. Let's explore the different values for Align Items. Stretch, Flex Start, Flex End, Center and Baseline. Let's start with Stretch, the default setting. When set to Stretch, Flex Items will expand to fill the container's height or width if the main axis is vertical. This ensures that every item is as tall as the flex container, unless you've specified a height. Next, we have flex start. Setting align items to flex start aligns all items to the start of the cross axis. In a row, this means the top of the container. Now let's change it to flex end. With flex end, items are aligned to the end of the cross axis. In our row scenario, that's the bottom of the container. Switching to center, center places all items in the center of the cross axis. This is a popular choice for vertically centering content within a container. Lastly, we have baseline. Baseline aligns items based on the baseline of the text within the items. This is particularly useful when flex items contain text of various sizes and you want to line them up neatly. That's it for align items. This property is incredibly useful for controlling how items align along the cross axis. The next one is the align content property in Flexbox, which controls the spacing and alignment of flex lines along the cross axis. This is similar to justify content, but while justify content deals with individual items, align content manages entire lines of items, especially when there's extra space in a multi-line flex container. Let's check out its values. Stretch, flex start, flex end, center, space between, space around, and space evenly. We start with stretch, the default setting. With stretch, line stretch to take up the remaining space in the container. If there's extra space vertically, each line will expand to fill it, making sure that all available space is used. Next up, flex start. Flex start packs all lines toward the start of the cross axis. In a column layout, this means all lines are packed at the top of the container. Switching to flex end now. Flex end aligns all lines towards the end of the cross axis. On a column, that means all lines are at the bottom. Let's move to center. Center aligns all lines in the middle of the cross axis, creating an evenly centered pack of lines within the container. Now, space between. With space between, lines are evenly spaced from one another with the first line at the start and the last line at the end of the container. Then space around. Space around gives space around each line. This space isn't just between the lines, but also before the first and after the last line, though these are half the size of the space between lines. Lastly, space evenly. Space evenly distributes all lines so that the space between any two lines, as well as before the first and after the last, is exactly the same. And that wraps up our look at align content. This property is crucial for managing how lines of items align and distribute space in multi-line flex containers, giving you full control over your layout's vertical spacing. Now, you know the flex container properties, next we explore the flex item direct properties. The first one is flex grow property. This property determines how much of the remaining space in the flex container should be assigned to each item. Let's get into how it works. Here we have a flex container with three items. By default, the flex grow value for each is set to zero. This means they'll only take up as much space as their content needs. Watch what happens when I set the flex grow of the first item to 1. 
With flex grow set to one, the first item now grows to take up all the remaining space in the container. After allocating the necessary space for the second and third items based on their content. Now let's set the flex grow of the second item to one as well. With both the first and second item set to flex grow, one, they share the available space equally, pushing out the third item to only its content width. Next, let's give the third item a flex grow of one, two. Now, all three items have flex grow. One, which means they equally share the entire space of the container. Finally, what if we change the flex grow of the first item from one to two? With a flex grow of 2, the first item now takes twice as much of the remaining space compared to the second and third items. This means it will be larger as it's claiming more of the extra space. And that's how flex grow works. Another essential property for flex items called flex shrink. This property determines how flex items will shrink relative to each other when there isn't enough space in the container. Let's see how this works with a practical example. Here, we have three items, each with a width of 240 px and by default, the flex shrink value for each is 1. This means if the container can't fit all items at their initial widths, they will shrink equally to fit within the available space. Now, let's see what happens when we change the flex shrink value of the first item to 2. With flex shrink set to 2 for the first item, it will now shrink twice as much as the other two items when there is not enough space. This is because it has a higher shrink factor, allowing it to give up more of its width compared to the others. The flex shrink factor is a way to control how much each item should give up of its size relative to the others in scenarios where the container can't hold all items at their full size. Let's move on to another interesting property in our Flexbox series, Flex Basis. This property sets the initial size of a flex item before any available space is distributed according to Flex Grow or Flex Shrink. By default, Flex Basis is set to Auto, which means the item size is based on its content or specified width. Here, each of our three items has a Flex Basis of Auto. Notice how each item sizes itself based on its content. Now. Let's change the flex basis of the first item to 200px and observe what happens. With flex basis set to 200px, the first item now has a starting size of 200 pixels, regardless of its content. This size acts as the base for any growth or shrinkage based on other flexbox properties. Next, let's adjust the flex basis of the second item to 50%. By setting the flex basis to 50%, the second item now takes up half of the container's total size as its starting point. This is particularly useful for responsive designs where you want an item to adjust based on the container's size. These adjustments to flex basis demonstrate how you can control the starting size of flex items, making it a powerful tool for designing flexible and responsive layouts. That's a wrap on flex basis. Next on our list is Align Self, a flexbox property that allows individual control over how each item is aligned along the cross axis, overriding the A-Align item setting of the container. This is extremely useful for customizing the alignment of specific items within a flex container. Let's dive into how this works. Currently, all three items are centered both along the main and cross axis due to the container's justify content and align item settings. Watch what happens when we adjust the align self property on the second item. By setting align self to flex, start on the second item, it moves to the start of the cross axis, which is the top of the container in this case. This change allows it to break free from the default center alignment set by the container. Now, let's try setting the align self property of the first item to flex end. With align self set to flex end, the first item moves to the end of the cross axis or the bottom of the container. This adjustment places it at the opposite end of the container from the second item, which is aligned to the top. These examples highlight the power of align self. Moving on to our final flexbox item property today, we're exploring order. This property allows us to control the sequence of flex items within their container, independent of their position in the HTML. It's incredibly useful for visually reordering items without changing the underlying document structure. Let's see how it's applied. By default, all flex items have an order of zero. 
meaning they appear in the order they are laid out in the HTML. Watch what happens when we change the order of item 2. Setting order to 1 for item 2 moves it to the end of the line. This is because the other items still have an order of 0, which ranks them before item 2. Now, let's adjust the order of item 1 to 5. With an order of 5, item 1 now moves to the end past item 2, which has an order of 1. This reordering places item 1 as the last in the sequence, illustrating how items can be dynamically rearranged. As you can see, the order property provides a straightforward way to control the layout order of items within a flex container. And that wraps up our discussion on order and our series on Flexbox item properties. Here are some predefined examples using the Flexbox which you can use in your next project. If you found this series helpful, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe and ring the bell for more tutorials like this. Have questions or want to see more about CSS Flexbox? Drop a comment below. Thanks for watching.